The Continental Drift Hypothesis did not gain much traction because it did not have a viable mechanism to explain how continents could drift around the planet. That is until the development of the bathometer during World War II. The bathometer is an instrument that measures the depth of the oceans, and this was very important for merchant ships and for submarines to navigate the oceans. One captain of a merchant ship, Harry Hess, who was a geology professor at Princeton in his civilian life, decided that he would run his bathometer continuously, even though he wasn't supposed to. The more he did this, the more he could map the sea floor, and he found that the ocean floor was not a flat abyss. Now, this had been hinted at before, but now there were detailed measurements to prove it. Hess also observed flat top mountains that he named Guilds. They were named after a friend, but some say the name comes from the idea of a, a guillotine because these mountains appear to have been beheaded. And you can think of them that way, and basically what beheaded them was wave action. What was weird about these geodes was that near the underwater ridges, the geodes were much closer to the surface of the water. But as you moved further away from the sea ridge, the geodes got deeper and deeper. Now how could this be? It would reason that the deeper geodes are too far down to be affected by wave action. Harry has thought perhaps these geodes used to be at the sea, sea surface at a time when they were closer to the sea ridge and the geodes have been moving away from the sea ridge uh, with time. Another interesting observation was that the ridges along the ocean floor formed in a pattern that mimicked the shapes of the continental coastlines. This led Hess and colleagues to the idea of seafloor spreading. Maybe instead of continents plowing through the sea floor, like the continental drift hypothesis suggests, maybe they were actually being spread apart at these sea ridges. And the spreading of the ridges is what is pushing the continents along. And that is the mechanism by which the continents have drifted around the Earth. At the time, even Harry Hess himself was skeptical of this idea without more evidence. The geodes were interesting, but just not enough. It looked promising though. A significant piece of evidence came at the end of the 1950s with the discovery of radiometric dating, which is a technique used to date minerals using the relative proportions of radioactive isotopes. Now we had the ability to measure the absolute ages of rocks in the sea floor, and it so happens that the sea floor is made out of basalt, which is a mafic igneous rock that works very well for this dating technique. As technology became available, cores were drilled into the ocean floor and samples were taken and tested. The results showed a very interesting pattern. The youngest rocks, or the youngest seafloor crust, was closer to the ridge and the oldest seafloor was away from the ridge. While this observation supported the idea of seafloor spreading, it still wasn't quite enough to say for sure that seafloor spreading was really happening. It wasn't until the 1960s that more evidence emerged that started to solidify the idea of seafloor spreading as the principal explanation for what we now call plate tectonics, but at the time it was still referred to as continental drift. This big piece of evidence came with the publication by Frederick Vine and Drummond Matthews that described magnetic anomalies over oceanic ridges. Two quick things to note here. One, there is strong evidence that throughout Earth's history, the magnetic poles have reversed. And two, igneous rocks have ferromagnetic minerals that will align themselves with the current magnetic field. So as they cool, as they solidify, they will preserve the magnetic field at that time.
So when magnetic surveys were conducted of the sea floor, they discovered a remarkably regular set of magnetic bands or stripes of alternating polarity across the sea floor. So stripes were parallel to the ridges. And what's more is that the stripes themselves were symmetrical across the ridge. It was a mirror image of the stripes on either side of the ridge. How do you get a pattern like that? Well, seafloor spreading could explain that very well. Imagine you have new basaltic magma rising at the center of an oceanic ridge, creating new seafloor and recording the current magnetic field as it cools. But as seafloor spreading continues, new material is brought to the surface at that ridge and this crust that was just formed gets ripped in half and pushed aside as that new crust is made. When the magnetic field flips, this too is preserved in the new oceanic crust. And this goes on and on through geologic time and with varying rates in magma rising and varying frequencies in magnetic pole reversals, and you end up with these striped parallel and symmetrical magnetism across the ocean floor. This is one of the strongest pieces of evidence to support seafloor spreading.